Thanks for joining the Abide YouTube channel. For more information about Abide, go to AbideChurchFL.com and enjoy today's message. So I don't want to take too long. Um, I just want to say, for those of you that are here, you probably have already heard Jeremiah, but I just want to honor you, man. I, like I said, Houses of Glory was a book that transformed our church. We read it, we chewed on it, and we just felt like it was a word from the Lord. So we're honored that you would come and that you would deposit. So can we just stand and give Prophet Jeremiah a welcome him as he comes forward? Amen. Thank you, Gio. Thank you to the Abide Church family. I'm just coming over from the other coast of Florida. We were in West Palm Beach the last couple of nights with our friend Cindy Jacobs, and they've been having meetings over there for nine years now with Bill Johnson and Heidi and just so many wonderful voices in the body. And uh, there were the most people that they've ever had in nine years of meetings. And it's not because we're special, it's because that there is a hunger that is growing in the nations uh, for awakening and for revival. And so thank you for coming out. Thank you for joining us. Uh, many of you know I have deep roots many years in Lakeland, Florida. Uh, I actually have roots here in Brandon, Florida. And so whether you've said hello, hello, whether you're here and you know me and I'm not recognizing you, hello. Don't want anybody to be offended if this is your first time. Look at your neighbor and say, buckle up. I want you to go ahead and turn to Acts chapter 3. I'm going to eventually land there. You know, sometimes prophets, they just sort of ramble. You hope that you can catch something that the Lord is putting on their heart. I have two objectives tonight. My first ob objective is to awaken the bride in Tampa Bay. Yeah. How many of you are down for that? Yeah. We want to pray for an awakening. We want to pray for a Holy Spirit outpouring. And then secondly, we want to declare war on the religious spirit. Yeah. We want to declare war on religion. Just going to let you know in advance that there is going to be some provocation tonight. In other words, I'm not here to stroke you. I'm here to provoke you. So things are going to manifest tonight. God, demons, the flesh. I'm just going to obey God. Whatever happens, happens. Is that okay? I believe that we are living in an hour. We're moving into an era in the church where the landscape is changing. And I believe that beyond the pandemic, there is a great gift that God is trying to give the church called radical. It's called exuberance. It's called that which is fresh. It's called that which is one octave too high for the natural ear. And so I, I really want to ask you to pray with me in faith that if there is any trace of religion, if there are any formulas and ideologies and patterns that we have fallen into that are quenching the voice of the Holy Spirit, I want us to declare war on them. In other words, we want to release a divine confrontation in the room, okay? Is that okay? All right, so would you grab the hand to the person next to you? They said this is an octagon, so I thought, perfect. Social media is full of people talking about being in an octagon that have never been in one. We're going to get into it tonight. So, Father, thank you for tonight. We thank you for your son, Jesus. 
Lord, I agree with the worship and the words and the atmosphere in this house that Jesus is king. We thank you that the reign of religion is growing weaker and weaker in America. And we thank you that the reign of the Holy Spirit is go, growing stronger and stronger. And Father, in Jesus' name, we declare war on religion. We declare war on anything, anyone, and everything that confronts the Holy Spirit in our lives. Lord, we yield to you. We bow before you. We pray that you would receive the full reward of your suffering. Everything that you died for, everything that you paid for with your life, Lord, release it into our lives, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I had a series of dreams before this year, and I want to read a, a, brief, a brief excerpt from the dream. The prophetic word that God has given me for 2023 is called the clash at the gates. In these series of dreams, God took me to city gates all over the world and showed me a clash between the spirit of religion and the spirit of revival. And the spirit of God began to speak to me in this dream and this is what he said. The primary war in 2023 is over the spiritual temperature and atmospheres in cities and regions. For where my people pursue me with great intensity and fervor, they will become like Goshen, inheriting my fire and favor. But where they grow lukewarm and religious, they will become like Egypt, groaning underneath the weight of religious slavery and demonic torment. Many times the only way you will be able to tell whether people want religion or revival will be through divine interruption. It is a key phrase in 2023, divine interruption. Does the Holy Spirit have permission to override our plans? Does the Holy Spirit have permission to order our church services the way He wants them ordered? And see, because this is a house of prayer, I praise God. Because it's in the place of prayer that we learn how to steward His voice and we learn how to get fresh unction from the Holy Spirit so that we know how to shift when Holy Spirit Spirit says shift. And the way that you learn how to shift is stewarding his voice in the secret place, not on stages. So again, be expecting divine interruption when you're driving down the road and the Holy Spirit says that gas station right there. And you say, but Lord, my wife said to be at home at 5 p.m. sharp. Can the Holy Spirit divinely, I just, I feel like some of you need to go ahead and let your spouse know. It's a year of divine interruption. You're going to have to be a little bit more flexible on your need to get out of church at the same time every Sunday. We're actually not doing religion. We're not going to bow down to a clock. Clocks have killed more moves of God than demons ever have. And I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit is going to attempt to divinely interrupt your life, and it's going to test how religious you are or not. I feel like one of the things the Holy Spirit wants to do tonight is to remind us. Some of us have forgotten our song. And I'm here to sing your song back to you. Some of us began in the spirit years ago. And like the Galatians, we're operating in the flesh and religion. I want to call many of you back to your roots. 
I want to call many of you back to the place of full dependence and surrender on the Holy Spirit where we stop telling Him what to do and we start taking orders from Him about what we're going to do. Divine interruption. Will my people keep pressing in even when service is over? Will they grow uncomfortable when I demonstrate my kingdom in their midst or will they seek to participate and cry out for more? He continued, last paragraph, there is a call to the wall in 2023. I'm gathering my people who will partner with me in great prayer and fasting for their cities and regions. You must lift up your eyes beyond the needs of the local assemblies and recognize that I'm bringing unity and agreement among many churches and many ministries in geographic locations for such a time as this. Where the spirit of revival is burning, you will see partnerships and alignments among many. But where the spirit of religion is dwelling, you will see great division and spiritual darkness increase in the land. We're going to get to Acts chapter 3, but when I began to ask the Holy Spirit, what are two passages of Scripture for 2023? He said, Matthew 23 and Acts 23. Now, in Matthew 23, these are eight woes that Jesus pronounces over the Pharisees and religious leaders. You see the Lord Jesus in the scriptures where there are sinners and where there are broken people, the Lamb appears. There is a kindness and there is a mercy that he operates toward them. But when you begin to gather Pharisees and religious leaders, you're going to get the lion. In Matthew 23, if you know anything about that passage of Scripture, and if that has anything to do with what we're going to see in the global church, we are about to see massive confrontation between the Lord Jesus and His kingdom and the traditions of men that we have enslaved people into and the orphanages that we have built called churches, not led by sons and daughters, but led by orphans. The orphans and the orphanages that are home to the religious spirit are growing weaker and weaker and the reign of the Holy Spirit that facilitates fathering with sons and daughters is going to grow stronger and stronger. When I begin to ask the Lord about this Matthew 23 and then you have Acts 23, Paul is on trial being persecuted by the religious leaders. We'll get to it, but I'm also going to prophesy to you, and this isn't a feel-good word, many of us are about to experience the greatest religious persecution you've ever known. And it's not going to come from the church down the road. It's going to come from family members. It's going to come from friends that you've known a long time. I'm just telling you right now in January, they're going to start saying you're in a cult. They're going to start saying you're too radical. They're going to start saying you're fasting too long. They're going to start saying you don't want to hang out with us any longer. They're going to start persecuting those who are choosing to live in revival. And listen to me. It's not because anything is wrong with you. It's because the fire that you're choosing to steward is making their religious demons mad. The moment someone gets out of neutral zone and they hit the accelerator, I'm telling you there's something about religion that does not like radical. There's something about religion that does not like extreme acts of worship. 
There is something about religion that hates women. Oh. I mean, we have stomach for some of the most boring men preachers you've ever heard. And we're fine with male boring preachers who haven't tapped into the Holy Ghost in years, but the moment a woman takes the microphone, the religious demons manifest. And I'm telling you, the religious spirit that, oh, we're going to see mighty women rise in this nation. We're going to see deliverers. We're going to see apostles. I, I'm not just talking about the little woman in the back. Not, oh, well, we got a, a kid's church pastor. She's a female. I'm talking about a woman who God is making a place for, who has developed a history in God, who's going to expose all the men who have mommy issues. Oh my, Oaks. forth the sisters. Man. Just everything is fine as long as you attend church. What if I told you the devil is thrilled with a generation who attends church? What if he is totally okay with you checking religious boxes? What if what really terrifies him is not that you live in church, but that you've chosen to live in Christ? <laughs> David is bringing the Ark of the Covenant into Jerusalem, a man of the presence. He makes a mistake the first time you know the story. God in his mercy gives him a second opportunity and he gets it right. And all of a sudden, his own wife looks down at his extravagant, exuberant act of worship. And it says she despised him in her heart. I want you to write this down. Extravagant acts of worship always invite the criticism of the barren. Extravagant acts of worship always invite the criticism of the barren. It says that Michael or McCall, however you want to split it, she was barren the rest of her days. And you know what David says to her? David doesn't bow to the religious spirit. He doesn't cower because it's his wife. You know what David says? If you think that dance was radical, if you think you've seen me dance yet, he says, I'm going to become even more undignified than this. And I'm telling you, some of you, we haven't even seen the real you yet. We have not even seen the real you yet. And again, the sad thing is in many churches and ministries, we haven't even yet legalized radical praise and worship because we are so in a hurry to get through our order of service so that we can say we had church today when the Spirit of the Lord is calling on the church saying, will you yield to me? We're in need of radical. We're in need of extreme. We're in need of exuberance. The woman with the alabaster box. It's all good. Everyone's there. But the moment someone makes 
an extreme gift, the disciples go crazy. I'm going to say it one more time. It's okay as long as you stay in the boat and do the American dream. You're not, you're not going to really get a lot of warfare and a lot of kickback as long as you're fitting in. But the moment you choose to get radical, the moment you see, you, you say you haven't seen anything yet, the moment you say yes to becoming a firebrand, the moment you say yes to becoming a friend of the bridegroom, not a friend of Babylon, the moment you say yes to Jesus, you begin to shift and shake things who are going to confront you. And I'm prophesying to you tonight that God is going to release boldness and courage to an end time army. You know, one of the number one signs of religion is joyless Christianity. You know why we can't get anybody saved? They're looking at you. Everywhere that I travel, I try to ban miserable Christianity. So I want to break down the nature of the religious spirit tonight. We're going to jump into Acts 3, but I want to try to give you language so that you understand the nature of religion and how that we can combat it and overcome it and get the victory. I said that religion hates radical. It hates extravagance. The nature of religion is about control. That's why many services are over before they begin. That's why many of our daily schedules are over before they begin because we have no interest in inviting the Holy Spirit. Again, it's scary to let go of control. How does the spirit of religion manifest? Well, it's like, why aren't you singing the words on the screen? Religion is scripted. Those who are in revival sing from their heart. Those who are bound in religion have to stand up and read scripted prayers because we're afraid of something getting messy. And I truly believe that as wine skins are shifting and changing in this nation, we're going to have to ask the Holy Spirit to give us a revelation of what he's calling certain people to do so that we do not attack and criticize that which is of God. We, have, we are beyond the pandemic that has released the greatest shaking this generation has ever known. And beyond the shaking, we are seeing new movements, new churches, new ministries be born. And as things are born, they're going to have a poopy and a pee-pee. They're going to throw up. In other words, you're going to have leaders emerge that are trying to figure out in real time, pioneering, Lord, what are you saying? What are you doing? And what the Holy Spirit is saying is we've got to give them room to find that which God is calling them to and we can't be too quick to criticize what's of the Lord because so many people criticize what they don't understand. And I just pray in Jesus' name that a religious spirit of criticism and accusation you will be delivered from in Jesus name I pray that we will cease fire and stop all the wars online because we don't have a revelation yet of what God has called them to do listen this is not a cult this is not a gang 
We don't have to all look like and act like and talk like one another. This is the body of Christ. It's okay if he's called some people to build prayer rooms. It's okay if he's called someone to have house churches. It's okay. So when you start feeling that, is this discernment? Is this accusation? You've got to get a revelation. We don't even stop and pause and say, Lord, is this something that you could be doing in a new era that I've never seen before? Is this a voice that you're wanting to raise up that I'm not really sure of? And Lord, I need to give them a little grace to find their stride. Lord, I don't want to be a wet blanket to a firebrand that's emerging. I don't want to go religious on them. Isn't that what Jesus said in Matthew 23? Woe to you. Pharisees and religious leaders, rather than becoming stepping stones into my kingdom, you have become stumbling blocks. Oh, Holy Spirit, put a guard on our mouth. Folks, do you realize you have the power to literally block people from connecting to the voices and streams God wants them in? What if God has called them into a stream you're not called to be a part of, but you have enough sense to recognize, let's wait and see what emerges. You get, I get in these greener, like, ah, this person and this person and this person. And I'm like, whoa, has anyone prayed and got a revelation yet? That maybe I'm not seeing what they're seeing and I'm not hearing what they're hearing. Again, I'm just prophesying to you. We're in the middle of a big mess in the body of Christ, and it's a good thing. A massive mess of changing diapers and poopy and pee-pee and throw up and... There are people and movements and streams being born and growing up in the earth. And I pray that you and I would find ourselves in the prayer room and not the accusation room. Wow. You know, I've noticed over the years that the spirit of religion does have favorite targets. There is a specific group of people that the religious spirit targets. The religious spirit has favorites. And here's the favorite, it could be you. Religion's favorite victims are those who once had a radical testimony for the devil. Religion loves to take people who once slept around, drank around, drugged around. They didn't know the limits or the boundaries of evil. They enjoyed it. Is anybody, was that you? And again, and it's okay to raise your hand because I'm actually going to try to break religious shame off of you tonight. Because we don't have a realm of breakthrough and deliverance in the church yet because the devil shut you up for too long. We'll get to that in a minute. But there's a group of people that have a radical testimony of one serving the devil. And when religion attacks them, this is what happens. They go from having a radical testimony of serving the devil to having a very boring testimony of serving God. Our churches in America have become feeder systems for these people. We are housing a lukewarm, false gospel in this nation where we are allowing people to sit in their compromise and sin while they supposedly soak in the love of God where I'm really telling you the real love of God and the real grace of Jesus that doesn't leave you in the, the pig slot still sleeping with your boyfriend, that kind of false grace and that kind of false love is going to get confronted when real revival comes. Okay, so we've got the druggies, we've got the drunks, 
We've got the fornicators. I mean, we've got hopefully the X. You were formerly sons and daughters of darkness. Hopefully we can say formally. Hopefully we're still not trying to figure out who's saved or not. My number one problem when I go and preach, I don't know who's saved or not. Okay. Here we go. So religion comes, and what it does is it presents a false gospel. I'm going to tell you there is a false gospel being preached in cities and nations all over the world. It's just not coming from the internet. There are doctrines of demons that are being preached from behind pulpits. If this makes you uncomfortable, go read the New Testament. It is Paul warning the churches of false prophets and false teachers and false doctrines. We need real apostles... I know religion doesn't like them either. We need real apostles to rise in the body of Christ and confront false doctrine. Again, confrontation is of God. Rebuke and correction is of God. We don't measure truth by how it makes me feel. We measure truth by the word of God. So if someone is preaching that you cannot habitually and continually live in sin and think you're going to heaven, if that doesn't make you feel good, I'm sorry. That's the word of God. I'm not sorry. Well, brother, maybe people can be born gay. Well, here, let me tell you something. You might think you're born gay, but no one is born again gay. Just wish we would, we're fighting and we're bantering and we're bickering. Let's just go right here. Because again, we're called to feed sheep, not entertain goats. When we water down the gospel, we strip it of its true power. And we are watering down the gospel, making the church become a subculture for the world. And we are creating environments where the goal has become to win the lost when that should be happening out there. The goal of the church is to make disciples of Jesus Christ. Again, I know I'm going to rile a bunch of people out there. It's a wonderful thing when visitors come to church and feel convicted of sin. It's a wonderful thing when they walk into the doors of the church and the real glory is there. Again, I'm not talking about gooseys and I'm not talking about jumping. When the real glory of God comes, you will either hit the floor or hit the door. That's a kind of glory, glory realm. Not feathers and gold dust and and rubies. I'm talking about a real weight of the fear of the Lord. Where there's a line that's dropped in the sand, you're either in or you're out. I'm okay with changing diapers. I'm okay if people are coming into the kingdom and they're new to God and they need nurturing and they need care and they need discipleship. But we have people that have been attending church for 10, 20, 30 years that are still asking to be coddled. They still want to be babied. They're still trying to figure out if God loves them enough. And we need to say, yes, he does. He loves you enough not to leave you the way that he found you. He loves you enough to say it's time to grow up. He loves you enough to say stop being delivered every Sunday and get into discipleship. Stop it. Stop. So these folk who have these radical for the devil, they get hooked on a false gospel. And here's the false gospel. With every head bowed and eyed closed. 
Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Time out, though. You just, with your eyes open and your head up, committed acts of wickedness and darkness that everybody could see. How did you once go of not caring how many, who, what, when, where? How did we go from just freely giving ourselves over to the devil and his kingdom to now some kind of false gospel that says, just bow your head so no one will see? When the Lord Jesus Christ hung naked on a tree for your sin. When the apostles were martyred for their faith, yet the goal is, oh, it's okay, little baby. It's okay. You, he loves you. God's just so lonely up there. Man, he's just, he's feeling lost tonight. He just, he really needs some people to keep him company. I'm telling you, we're preaching this puny, false Jesus making ourselves feel good because we're, we're taking up cards of, oh, 10,000 saved. What does that even mean? How many of us know Jesus is not a pepper and salt shaker that adds flavor to our life? How many of you know Jesus is the way? He is the truth and he is the life. How many of us know the real gospel is deny yourself? Pick up your cross and follow him. How many of us know when we come to the Lord Jesus Christ and we fully surrender our lives to him, he breaks the power of the sin nature off of our lives. How many of you are grateful to be set free from the dominion and the chains of darkness? Thank you, Jesus for your blood that's washed me. I thank you that I'm a new creation. The old is past, the new has come. And Lord, I thank you. I praise you, God, when people don't want to cuss around me. It's a sign I'm saved. I thank you, Lord, when people get uncomfortable and start calling me the preacher because I'm finally manifesting the fruit of the gospel. Because I don't, I don't know if we really told people. The moment you said yes to Jesus, you have become a foreigner, a stranger, an alien. The moment you said yes to Jesus, you said yes to stop fitting in to the systems of the world. And you said yes to an incorruptible kingdom that can never be shaken. Oh, thank you, God. Just, I pray some of us that pressure would come off. No more church services where the goal is to cater to the unbeliever. No more going into restaurants. And see, the nature of religion is behavior modification. That's the false gospel. Just change how you behave. Change what you say. Change how you act. But don't give me your heart. Don't give me your radical yes. So we get this false gospel of bow your head so no one can see if you're saved or not. And then it's like join a church. And so these people that were once radical for the devil. The truth is they've served the devil way better than they've ever served God. And I have come tonight in the spirit of the Lord to provoke some of you to jealousy. I have come to provoke many of you to love and good deeds. I have come to provoke many of you that you have become domesticated by religion. You have become tamed. And the word of God says that the righteous 
are as bold as lions. And I'm just telling you, our little kitty cat religion is not scaring the devil. Our little lukewarmness and compromise and moaning about laws in this nation and who's president, all of those religious games are diminishing and growing weaker and weaker. And God is looking for an Elijah generation who are going to call down fire from heaven. I still have it in my heart that there is a radical generation that's going to rise in this nation who are all in. Because folks, if you're not sold out, you will sell out. There is so much danger in straddling the fence. We have too many fence riders in the church today when God is raising up faithful witnesses of the gospel who are going to drop the plumb line, who aren't going to preach for money. They're going to preach for the applause of heaven. We need messengers on assignment that are not there because they got invited, but because God sent them. We need to see the church bend underneath the weight of the word of the Lord in this nation. We need trembling again. We need the fear of God again. We need the Holy Spirit unction to get down on the inside of us. I pray that the power of religion would begin to loose you in Jesus name. I put a demand in the atmosphere on those of you who were once wild for the devil and I break the curse of religion off of your life. And I command the spirit of complacency and apathy and lethargy to go in Jesus' name. I pray for sandpaper. I hope I rub you wrong. I hope you leave here trying to examine if you're really saved or not. Come on. Come on. We have a precious brother, Todd Smith. How many of you know Todd? Leading an incredible over 50,000 water baptized, 10,000 confirmed miracles, a father in the faith. I saw him do something that must happen in this generation. He gives a gospel call. People come down to the front and then he says, I'm gonna try to talk you out of it. Wow. And he looks at this young guy and he goes, you realize that if you accept the gospel, you can't keep sleeping with her. You, you, you realize you're living in sin and Jesus is not an item on a buffet that you can add to your life and your fornication. You're going to have to deny yourself, pick up your cross and follow him. Are you sure? Goes to the next woman. You're on drugs. Do you realize that your addiction to prescription pills is not more powerful than the blood of Jesus? Do you realize that the cross has power and dominion? Oh, are you sure? Folks, we're living in a generation where literally people are pulling their pants down on Friday and raising their hands on Sunday. There is so much mixture and so much deception and so much confusion. And I'm prophesying to you, God is going to raise up messengers of clarity that are going to confront the spirit of the age, that are going to expose a false gospel, that are going to drop a plumb line and say, are you in or are you out? Oh, we need holiness again. I was just preaching with Cindy Jacobs and she was crying after I preached. She said, Jeremiah, we need this again. Yes. We have a generation, they love the supernatural. Have you noticed this? As long as there are miracles, as long as there's personal prophecy, as long as people are worshiping worship, we're fine. But the moment someone starts confronting sin, the moment someone starts saying you can't live like the world and get into heaven, we freak out. And here's what we have to realize. They're around the throne right now and they're not saying grace, grace, grace. 
They're saying holy, holy, holy is the Lord God. It's like the word we hate the most is the one word being sang in heaven 24-7. But again, give me a couple more minutes. But I'm not talking about miserable Christianity. I'm not talking about, oh, God, what am I missing tonight on Saturday? We've created these miserable Christian environments where we're like wondering what's going, what, what we're missing out there. When I'm prophesying to you that days are going to come to the church where people out there are going to wonder what's happening in here. Well, what happened to that person? They used to be a drug addict and a fornicator, and now they're just not rotting on a pew. They've been set free, and they're wild for Jesus. The good news has become so good that I just can't help but share it. I was once a terror for the devil, and now I'm a champion for Jesus. Oh, I... I want to be careful for the kids, but how did I give my body to so many men and women? And I've never even led one person to Jesus. Oh, I was working and it's Friday paycheck. We're going to the bar. Was that you? Every Friday paid alcohol. But yeah, when we pass the offering bucket in church, we freak out. It's called religion. You have become domesticated. You have become tamed by the spirit of religion and don't even know it. And by the love of God, I'm sounding the alarm in Tampa Bay that God must have a people of radical light that will confront radical darkness. We're, we're, we're okay with radical darkness. Drag queens are reading books to our children. Oh, but guess what? No one wants to work in the kids' church. <laughs> Folks. Now, again, let me, let me expose them, but we've got a Facebook. I mean, we, oh, here's another article that Dr. Brown wrote about the transgenderism. What are you doing about it? Are you lifting up your voice at the city council and saying in the name of Jesus, that spirit of perversion is not coming into my home? Are you willing to get... I don't need the second house. I don't need the nicer car. I'm going to stop working and homeschool my kids. I'm... Lord, whatever it takes. Oh, I want to give you permission to burn. I want to give you permission to agitate religious people. I want to give you permission to act like a Christian. <laughs> Jeremiah, can you give us the state of the church? Here's my, here's my best. I probably preach in 50 churches and conferences a year. Here's... Here's my, we are now calling things radical that are just biblical. Oh my gosh, this, this church is fasting. They're really sold out. No, that's Christianity 101. Oh, this, this person there, they don't want to drink at work. I mean, I get, and again, I mean, here we go. I'm telling you, folks, it's a sign of how far we've fallen from the truth. There is such an urgent. We are in a state of emergency as a nation. The hour is dark. We are in a crisis. But we live in a world where darkness and the devil get louder and louder, and the church gets more quiet and quiet. And the Lord is looking for lions and lionesses who are going to roar and who refuse to become domesticated, tame kitty cats. Meow. 
Meow, 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 meow. That's what I hear online. Meow, 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 meow. I mean, are you doing anything about it? My religion, my region is so dry, brother. Plan a stinking church then. Stop criticizing and accusing all of the religious people in your area and actually do something about it. Folks, we are creating these environments even tonight where you can say amen and become a victim of what I call conviction addiction. There are some people in this generation, they are, they are addicted to feeling convicted about their sin, but they have no desire for change. Oh, wow. well, that was a good word, Brother Jeremiah. Oh, that was the truth. What are you doing about it? Are you going to act a little crazier tomorrow at church? Are you going to crank worship up so loud in your home and invite your kids to worship that the neighbors call the police? Oh, it's coming. I just, I, 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 I feel in my heart that we must have new wine and new wineskins because there is such old religious wineskins in the church that if we're honest, they do not want the move of the Holy Spirit. They want their jobs, they want their money, they want their comfort, they want their convenience, and God is calling a generation of firebrands out of Babylon, and they are going to begin to build. And there, I'm seeing, I love the flags. I've been seeing flags flags all over America. I've been seeing crazy women wa waving flags in parks and neighborhoods and hotels and people are looking out there, what in the world? What's God looking for? A yes. I, I just pray as we we're beginning to wind the plane. I, I pray that we can just say, yes, Lord. Well, tell me, yes, Lord. Well, well, yes, Lord. He wants a yes before you get to control what he asks. Glory to God. Ooh. Oh, I love making the devil pay. Oh, folks, has it ever struck your mind how many years you spent in darkness and how reprobate and how addicted you were to darkness? And you get born into the kingdom of light and now we're realizing the goal is not to rot on the back of a pew because I'm a bunch of pew fodder for a preacher the goal is not to be an audience. God's calling me to become an art part of the army. Yeah. So once I get that, I'm like, wait a minute. I didn't get free from drugs just to tell people I got free from drugs. When I catch revival fire and the Holy Spirit consumes me, I'm actually going back into the enemy's camp and I'm going to make him pay for all the years I spent in rebellion. Oh. I know people, I'm talking like holy terrorists. They did not love, I'm talking about like the martyr thing. Lord, it's the least that I could do. But folks, I want to hit this. Some of us need to get over the shame of your past. Oh, brother, I don't really have anything to offer. I've been married three times. Praise God. Make sure that young guy doesn't get married three times. Oh, brother, I spent 20 years on drugs and I lost my mind. Get every young guy you can and tell him, you better get a job. You better have a plan. That five foot eight, 139 pound woman, she might come that you want to marry that's a supermodel, but she doesn't need a boy trapped in Peter Pan syndrome who doesn't want to grow up. She
She needs a man of the house. She needs someone that can take spiritual authority in their home. You're not going to become addicted to video games. You're not going to watch HBO late at night. We don't do that in this home. Like, is it okay to call parents to be parents in this generation? They're like, brother, preach on revival. I feel like we need to preach on parenting. Like, there's this word called no. But like little Johnny, they're not going to dictate where you go and when you go. They're going to jump in the river and they're going to adapt to the flow of the Holy Spirit. And we're going to keep them in the fire until the fire gets down on the inside of them. And then I'm not a hypocrite. I don't speak in tongues at church and then I curse my wife at home. I don't do religion. That's religion. I don't do performance. I don't do theatrics. I don't dance around. Oh. <laughs> Folks, you can burn. I want you to deny the lie that you can't burn when you get married. I want you to rebuke the lie that when you get married and have little kids, now it's time to play house. And now it's time to buy a home. And now it's time to become complacent and religious and lethargic. I say when you get married, the fire doubles. I say for every kid that you have, the whole baby refiner's fire is burning down on the inside of you. Oh, glory to God. All night prayer, it's not a big deal. My kid keeps me up at night. No, he doesn't. You're making your wife do it. May the Lord rebuke you, sir. Folks, I see healthy marriages. I see healthy families. I see fires burning of revival all over this nation. No more games. No more hypocrisy. Who's ready for an altar call? him pay folks I want you to adapt a term make him pay I want to give you permission to burn for Jesus and I want to give you permission to hate the devil and his works I want to give you permission to not just talk about wickedness in this culture I want to give you permission to do something about it the people never knew how dry and stale the Pharisees were, listen to me, until Jesus came on the scene. Mark chapter 1, he stands up and starts teaching. Who is this man with this kind of authority? He doesn't teach like the narrative of the day. In other words, there was something on his life. There was a cultivated intimacy with the Father that it wasn't until he started demonstrating the kingdom that the, see, some of us were like, man, my family, my wife, they're in religion, my region. They don't know they're in religion unless you model the difference. You can keep sitting on the internet and the keyboard talking about how religious and dry America is, or you can actually roll up your sleeves, get in the octagon, start demonstrating the kingdom, stop being a hypocrite, go all in for Jesus, and then let them decide who's God. How we doing? Anybody manifesting yet? Got your tomatoes ready? All right, Acts 3, here we go. Man, I hate the devil. Liar. 
Oh, my. I, I, want, to, I want to see prostitutes turn to preachers. I want to see us plug people into a man named Jesus rather than our programs. I, I want to see people with a radical testimony for the devil overnight get set on fire. I, I don't want to be a wet blanket. You know how many people they catch fire? The Spirit of God is visiting them. And then they go to a family member or a religious leader and they end up getting talked out of their radical commitment because they ran into a wet blanket, not a father. I just pray we would all ask for forgiveness right now. Lord, I'm sorry that if there's ever been anyone in my life that wanted to radically pursue you and I shut them down because they provoked and exposed my religious spirits. I'm sorry. I want to be a gateway to the kingdom. See, radical fire needs radical accountability. We need men and women. We need fathers and mothers in the body of Christ to rise and be a safe place for the burning ones. So Acts chapter 3, let's look at this clash at this gate and we'll close. Now Peter and John were going up to the temple at the ninth hour, the hour of prayer. And a certain man who had been lame from his mother's womb was being carried along, whom they used to set down every day at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, in order to beg alms of those who were entering the temple. For the sake of our meeting tonight, let me make it plain. Peter and John are our revivalists. These are two men who had been with Jesus. These are two men who had paid a price. They were uneducated. They were ordinary men, but they had been with Jesus. And then we have the, the crippled beggar who is our victim of religion. There was a clash that came at a beautiful gate. And I want to tell you, to the natural eye, religion is beautiful. Because it doesn't require much from you. It allows you to stay in your complacency and your apathy. Just sit down, shut up, get through the drive through entertainment service. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Here's 15 and I'm done. It's beautiful. It's alluring, it's attractive to the flesh. A collision at this gate. Notice that Peter and John are going to prayer, but the lame crippled beggar is at the orphanage begging. And when he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he began asking to receive alms. And Peter, along with John, fixed his gaze upon him and said, Look at us. And he began to give them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, I do not possess silver and gold, but what I do have I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene walk. I felt in my heart tonight to encourage some of you, never be ashamed if all you have to offer people is Jesus. I want to encourage you as a parent, you might not have enough money to take them to Disney World. You might have not have enough money to buy your 16-year-old a BMW. Stop it, by the way. You might not have enough money to give them tools to help them to go down the path of darkness. Hello. But I want to encourage you. God is mantling a generation with a revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we cannot give away 
away what we ourselves don't possess. It's in this moment and in this clash and in this confrontation, this was not something that happened spontaneously. This was rehearsed. Again, these were men that walked with Jesus. You even have Simon the sorcerer. He observes that they're walking in power and he wants to pay for it. He wants to go through the impartation line and oh my gosh, if I can only get a famous Christian leader to lay hands on me, I'm a revivalist. If I only pay the fee to the conference, I'll really be a friend of the bridegroom. They expose that deception that also must be exposed in this generation. And they say, Simon, your motives are wrong. Simon, you're looking for an all-access pass to the glory and power of God. And it will only come to your life as you lay it down. Thank you, Lord. It's quiet in here. just got Jesus. What if this generation decides Jesus plus nothing is everything? Folks, what what if we're in this massive shift of wineskins where there's like no wineskin? What if we're in a generation, they don't care where you meet. They don't care about the structure. They don't care about the time of day. They just want Jesus. Seizing him by the right hand, he raised him up. Immediately his feet and his ankles were strengthened. And with a leap he stood upright and began to walk. And he entered the temple with them, walking and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they were taking note of him as being the one who used to sit at the temple gate begging alms. We find out in the later chapter that this beggar was over 40 years old when he was healed. It says that he was set down every day. I want to tell you that the breeding ground of religion is routine. I make people angry when I tell them I don't believe in the 365-day-a-year Bible plan. Because here's my question. What happens if on February 4th, the glory of God falls on Exodus 5? And what happens if God says, it's not about you religiously continuing to read your Bible. And by the way, you really don't even know what you read. It hasn't changed anything in your life. You just want to religious and say, I did it. What if the glory of God falls in Exodus and says, read this the rest of the year? Just wish we would even take a risk. Even just step out in faith. Just even give Holy Spirit an opportunity to do something. I mean, when's the last time you just waited on him? When's the last time you just stepped out in faith and said, Lord, I believe your glory wants to fill Applebee's. Lord, I believe that your glory wants to fill my neighborhood. So, Lord, I'm I'm not going to give you what costs me nothing. It's in routine. It's in repetition. The Holy Spirit comes and shifts and shakes us out of normal routines and challenges the things that we've set in place. The Holy Spirit is after something fresh, something radical. He's after a new normal in the body of Christ. The most interesting thing about Acts 3 is actually this gate. You're going to miss the whole point of the message if you don't key in with me here. See, religion picks strategic people and places and releases strongholds. Religion handpicks, you're in this room. Religion has handpicked you, sir or ma'am, because of your past. And the religious spirit will do everything that it can to keep you tame, to keep you domesticated, to keep you just attending church. That's the nature of religion. It will do everything that it can to keep you tame. 
And the spirit of religion picks this temple gate called beautiful. And what we know is that there were nine gates around Jerusalem. And each of the gates, certain activity could go through the gates. And we know in history, the temple gate called beautiful, there were things that could happen behind this gate that could not happen behind other gates. We know behind this gate was the court of the women. This was the only gate that women could enter through. This was a gate where the Levitical shaped, trumpet shaped boxes, excuse me, for tithes and offerings were behind. Strategic gate. How old was Jesus when he died? 33. How old was the crippled beggar when he was healed? Let me refresh your mind with some stories. Do you remember when Simeon and Anna dedicated Jesus in the temple as a baby? Do you know that they would have had to go through the temple gate called Beautiful, the one where women and children are allowed to walk through? Do you know that that lame beggar was right there when Christ was a child? Do you, re do you remember when Joseph and Mary were leaving Jerusalem, operating in a religious spirit, assuming that Jesus was with them when he wasn't? Let me try this side. Do you remember when Mary and Jesus were caught, excuse me, Mary and Joseph were caught in religion, assuming that Jesus was with them when he wasn't? Where was he? He was back behind the temple gate called Beautiful at 12 years old, astounding the Pharisees and religious leaders. Do you remember when Jesus would go cleanse the temple and he would go where the money changers were? In other words, he would go right behind the temple gate called Beautiful and he would drive them out. Do you realize that the lame, crippled beggar sat in church, sat at the gate, his entire life do we realize there is a generation who religion has crippled who religion has tamed who religion has turned into beggars and they are just laying there they have experienced all that the temple has to offer they've seen the programs they've been to the conferences they've seen the best lineups yet they're trapped Who am I talking to? Oh, I, I raised him in church. You know how many parents I weep with at altars in this nation who raised their kids in church and when they hit 18, they went buck wild Come on. Come on. and were praying and crying and what, what happened? Well, religion got a hold of you and introduced this concept called the twisted Hannah syndrome. And religion comes and gets parents to believe that, like Hannah, I guess there's a kids' church and a youth group to drop my kids off at so that they can disciple them. And so now I can forsake my own responsibility as a parent to disciple my kids. And then when they get to university and do what they do, I blame the church rather than taking responsibility for my lukewarmness. <laughs> Folks, can we get beyond the hypocrisy? It's true, brother. I, I love the television program more than I love actually parenting my kid. Wow, it's just so much easier to go. Yep. Go watch Goo Goo Gaga, Baba Baby. <laughs> so I can just veg out and check out. Just so much easier to throw them to the kids' church. Throw them to, I mean, I've already thrown them away the rest of the hours of the week. What if we got free from religious hypocrisy 
of wearing our Sunday best and faking it till we making it because the pastor's there. And what if we actually got in revival and said, I have a problem? What if we just started calling sin, sin? Isn't it, isn't it funny? These, I mean, it's like we didn't get to the club till like midnight. I don't know. I got home at four, six, but I like got saved and now church has to be an hour. Wait, wait, what? What? Oh, I, I, I've got ADD. I just, it's, it's interesting because I just, I just saw you play video games for six hours. You didn't take a bathroom break. You didn't even want food. It's called idolatry. Like it's, it's idolatry. You love entertainment more than you love Jesus and you bought a false gospel of accommodation that you need deliverance from, what am I saying? Some of us need to actually get saved tonight. Some of us need to get born again, again. Some of us literally need to lay it all down and say, Lord, I've heard the real gospel. Lord, I thank you that you've taken me as someone formerly trapped in radical darkness and you have borne me into your kingdom not to be a kitty cat and meow. I want to say yes to becoming a lion and a lioness and I'm not only going to roar and I'm not only going to live right and I'm going to model for those how I'm really supposed to live, but then you're going to give me the strength and courage to go back into that which once bound me and deliver a knockout blow to the enemy's camp. This is about inheritance. This is about destiny. This is about breaking the power of shame from your past. And this is about you stepping into a fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit and fire. This is about God raising up radical revivalists who don't know the boundaries and the limitations of the kingdom of God. This is about people saying, how much of heaven can I still have on this earth and still breathe? This is not how much of the world can I have and still get into heaven. That is born from the lukewarm soup. Listen, how did the devil go from a snake in the book of Genesis to a dragon in the book of Revelation? We fed him. What you want to die, starve. What you want to grow, feed. Folks, here's how we're going to end it. So this brother, after 40 years of cripple, he's praising God. He's healed. He's delivered. He's set free. But the religious people are angry. Bible says, beware of false prophets. I say, beware of well-intending family members. Oh, I want to see you catch fire this year. God does. He wants to see the rain of religion fall. He wants an authentic, radical, pure firebrand group to come out of Tampa Bay. But some of your fiercest resistors are going to be those around you Guys, some of us need to throw the shovel down. Do you know how many funerals Joshua and Caleb must have done? A promise given to an entire generation, and they're all dying, and they're just digging their graves one by one. Do you think that there were, were people who they thought would be with them that didn't get in? Some of us have been grieving. We've been grieving Saul. We've been grieving religious wineskins that cannot hold the new wine. We've been sitting in a dead, dry, stale church for 15 years, still praying for Pastor Billy Bob, and the Spirit of God is saying, stop mourning for Saul. 
get up and I'm raising up a Davidic company in the earth who are going to pursue. I, I don't know that we realize that by hanging around religious people, how quickly we grow religious. I think people deceive themselves about how sober and how alert they are. And they try to engage in mixture and they try to engage in casual harlotry. And we have become like Samson who didn't even know. Folks, he was deceived in the anointing he walked in. So that when the Philistines broke in, he didn't even realize he didn't have the strength. Some of us are realizing if an alarm sounded tonight and said, everybody to the battle stations, is your heart on fire? Is your marriage where it needs to be? Are your kids in alignment? If the answer is no, what do we need to change? What do we need to do? Where do we need to command religion to go and say, yes, Holy Spirit? We're taking up an offering at our church tomorrow in Charlotte. We're calling it a revival offering. We've challenged our church. We want you to sell a possession that you have and sow it into revival. We're not hiding this from our children. We have families in our church. We gathered up our four kids, 11, 9, 7, and 5. And we prayed and we said, okay, we love revival. We love the move of God. We love your presence in our home, Jesus. And we love your presence at church. What can we offer you? And the Lord said, I want your side by side. Lord said, I want that one vehicle of entertainment that you love as a family. I want your most expensive piece of entertainment for the greatest glory of revival you've tasted yet. Here's the conversation. My son's like, why? I said, Dad, we got Oreos. We got... And I began to have a conversation. Hang with me. And I, I began to feel the pleasure of God having an opportunity as a father to shape and disciple my son's mind into believing that there are even good things in this life that become God's that he wants. What can I do this year in 2023 to partner with the clash at the gates? I want to pray that we would give more money to the kingdom of God this year than we ever have. Three of us. I'm telling you, religion has come. If you do not find joy in giving your money to the kingdom of God, you are being choked by religion. You have become suffocated by a poverty spirit. Hear me, because if the devil can keep you poor, he can control you. The devil would never tell you to give an offering. Anybody getting those emails right now for your taxes of how much you gave? My wife and I, every year, we write down, we gave this ministry, this ministry, and we pray and say, Lord, double it. Yeah. I get fired up. I'm getting fired up in January. I'm seeing all these receipts come in, and I'm, I'm saying, and again, here, here's my revelation. I make the devil pay with my money. Do you, do you realize that you have seed that God has given you that you can make the devil be submitted underneath your feet by walking in kingdom generosity and not poverty? Every time I give, I say, I rebuke you, Satan, in Jesus' name. I command every lack, every poverty spirit, every anxious thought, every American, in the name of Jesus, bam. And if I feel resistance, more. In religion, we beg. 
in religion, we back down. In revival, we up the ante. In revival, we become even more undignified. And again, I, I want to just, just one more minute. It's okay to be scared. The born again experience is the most exciting and terrifying journey of your life. You should be full of terror one moment because your life is not your own and God has authority over your finances, over your car. God can tell you to move. God can change his mind. Oh, but brother, I thought people that hear the spirit of God and obey him will always disrupt the religious 50-year plan. A guy just called me. He's like an end-time prepper person, whatever that is. He has, you know, gold and silver and guns and they just sold $89,000 of all of it and sowed it into revival and said, the Lord delivered me of political fear. Oh, Lord. Where's my organ? I'm preaching too many church of gods. Nobody's running yet. I want to give. Will you partner with me? We're not going to take up another offering. Okay, don't get too scared right now. Raise your hand, Lord. I want to give more money to your kingdom this year. Why, why if you can, should you be working so you can give money away? Duh. You cannot be an instrument of the kingdom of God if you don't have streams of income coming in. All right, secondly, what about the worship? How'd we do tonight? I'd give us about a seven. I'm looking for about a 15 in about 15 minutes. Oh, sister, I saw you in the club a couple years ago. Brother, I saw the way you were grinding. I saw the way you didn't care who, what, when, where, or how, but here, here was you tonight. They had to throw you out. You were so into the lust of your flesh and the wickedness of your soul, you danced the night away. Yet you want to know when's he going to stop preaching. Extravagant worship, extravagant praise. Do it in front of your kids. Please do not worship in private. Please model for your children a mom and dad who don't care what their religious neighbor thinks. I'm not going to let their barrenness hinder my worship. I'm not going to let their religiosity. Listen, they can make fun of your dance, but they don't know your deliverance. They don't know your story. They don't know how God saved you and delivered you and pulled you up out out of the mud and set your feet on the rock solid foundation of Jesus Christ and now he's filled you with the Holy Spirit and it's time to tongue talk it's time to heal the sick it's time to prophesy it's time to cast devils out go come on just I got the whole package baby I think there's an awakening. I feel in my spirit right now, the days of Wesley and Finney are coming. The days of the real blood are going to be preached again. There's going to be Hudson Taylors rise in this nation. There's going to be George Mueller's. There's going to be undignified, exuberant, extravagant worshipers. There's going to be prostitutes come in and give Jesus praise. There's going to be millionaires come in and write you the checks you need. I'm not throwing anybody away. Lord, bring them in. 
bring them in. Lord, get, surround me with some on fire people that will drive my religious devils crazy. Oh, men, men, let's begin to thank the Lord for a wife who loves us enough to hold the line. Thank you, honey, for not stroking my pride and arrogance. Thank you, mama, for telling me the truth when I needed to hear the truth. Thank you, wifey. Now we're in it. More money, more worship, more prayer, more, more, what, more, more. Let the hungry come, let the thirsty come. Don't let someone else's disobedience hinder your obedience. Don't allow somebody else's lethargy. And listen, corporate revival starts with personal revival. Stop blaming the church for why you don't have a flame. Stand to your feet tonight. As you do, let's just begin to pray in the spirit. Let's begin to thank God. There's a breaker anointing here. I'm telling you the power of religion. God is speaking over a generation to rise up and walk. If someone's manifesting around you, just put your hand on them and say, in Jesus' name, go. Or prayer team, man the battle stations. Come on, I can't hear you. Just lift up your voice. It's not a show. It's not a performance. It's yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I'm not going to harden my heart. On stadiums are going to be full in America tomorrow with people yelling and screaming and spending stupid amounts of money on a pigskin. More, Lord. More, Lord. Shandaraba Kayaraba, Sandaraba Kayaraba. More, Naraba Kayaraba, Sandaraba Kayaraba, Sandaraba Kayaraba. In the name of Jesus, we break the power of the religious spirit. I want you to put your hand on your head in Jesus' name. We take authority over every mindset born in poverty and religion. And we say, lack, go in Jesus' name. I thank you for a revelation of the impossibilities. I see God kissing many of you with a kiss called impossible. Let faith arise. Some of you need to get in faith. What do I mean? You need to say, Lord, give me the gift of faith. You need to get in faith for those dreams to come true. You need to get in faith for the impossible. more Lord more Lord eyes have not seen ears have not heard come and blow minds tonight Lord we declare the prodigals are coming home this year I prophesy household salvation you got to get out of religion, though, and get into revival. Oh, Lord, I pray my kid would have an encounter. It's time for you to have an encounter. Come on, make the devil pay. Set your course this year. Come on, think back on your history with God. Think back on what he's brought you from. Lord, 
write a story with me. start focusing on me. This is about Jesus, okay? But we want to prophesy the word of the Lord. Some people need to be broke into their new season with the word of the Lord as the voice of God thunders. Sir, in the curly hair and the glasses, would you come? Yep. Just pray, focus on Jesus, and as they come up, just stretch out your hands. Father, discipler of Christ, discipler of Christ, the Lord is giving you the ministry of apologetics. The Lord has given you a mind that will confound the wise. But right now in Jesus' name, power. Power of the Holy Spirit. I command, command every demonic spirit to leave your life right now. I take authority over the power of witchcraft and I command it to be broken right now. Every spirit of the occult, every trace and residue of evil, I command you to go right now in Jesus' name. Bow to the name of Jesus. We loose you from the grip of satanic power right now and command that anger and that rage to go right now in Jesus' name. I'm filling you with light. I'm filling you with love. I'm filling you with the Holy Spirit in fire. Come on, keep praying. Lord, we break the power of religious witchcraft in this room right now. Some of you, witchcraft has been spoken against you by your family, and you need freedom in Jesus' name. Every evil spirit that has come and tried to silence your voice, I break the power of lock jaw right now in Jesus' name. Every evil spirit that's been assigned to your mouth, 
We command that timidity. I rebuke the spirit of timidity. Every harassing spirit in Jesus' name go. I bind the spirit of intimidation and I command you to leave their life right now in Jesus' name. Come on, where are the firebrands? Come on, where are the firebrands? I need you to help me. I need you to shift this atmosphere. We've got to come up higher. The demons can't breathe up there. We've got to get up higher. Glory of God, come. Rage and anger, go in Jesus' name. Every spirit of murder, I command you to go right now in Jesus' name. Every critical accusatory spirit, we rebuke you right now in Jesus' name, go. We bless what you're doing. I encourage you to begin to bless. God, I bless them. God, I release them. God, I thank you for that man of God. I thank you for that ministry. I thank you for that movement. We bless and not curse. More, Lord. Some of you have been under a religious spirit of heaviness. The gospel has become a burden and a yoke to you. And I prophesy to you tonight, the joy of your salvation is returning in 2023. I put a ban in the spirit on depression. I put a ban in the spirit on miserable Christianity. I say discouragement has to go in Jesus' name. Discouragement go in Jesus' name. Weariness go in Jesus' name. Come on, just 30 more seconds. Pray, pray. Pray. We need fire encounters. We need Holy Spirit and fire encounters. Lord, restore marriages tonight. Lord, bring back the flame in the home. Restore order in Jesus' name. Some of you parents, you become intimidated by your rebellious children. And I speak over parents in this room in Jesus' name. I break that intimidating spirit off of your life. I say the spirit of Eli go in this generation in Jesus name. Spirit of Eli leave parents in this generation in Jesus name. Do not bow to fear. Do not bow to intimidation. Do not bow to manipulation in Jesus name. the Lord is setting religious captives free. He's setting religious slaves free. I'm telling you, some of you, it's okay. It's okay that you've gone to church your whole life and you're miserable. Just say it. You've got to identify a problem and stop living in denial. Lord, tonight we confess. If that's you, wave at me. It's okay. Lord, I'm still addicted to pornography. I repent. Lord, I'm still treating my wife awful. I repent. Lord, the shot in the arms are leaving now. Lord, I pray that you would release a spirit of travail in this room. I hear the Lord saying, I'm assigning intercessors to religious territories. And it's the groan and the travail, it's the tears that are gonna break up the fallow ground.
like we're unraveling religion. It has to be unraveled. It's like a snake. Listen to me. Listen to me. In the book of Acts, the Holy Spirit falls. The first century church is formed. Religion steps in. One, they grow jealous. They're jealous because of the present day activity of the Holy Spirit. When you say yes to God, people around you who are religious are gonna become angry and jealous. Second step, they lie. When jealousy gets in, then they begin to lie about you and your motives in question. After they lie, then they're going to accuse. After they accuse, they're going to persecute. And I'm telling you, the chief end goal of religion is murder. It is a spirit of assassination. I want to say it one more time. You do not realize that religion is trying to assassinate you. It wants you out completely. If you're under that spirit, I want you to wave at me. If you feel that you're under a spirit of assassination, a religious spirit that's been assigned to you, that's brought accusation, persecution, lies, and jealousy, I want you to lift your hand. If somebody's lifted their hand just in their by you, just put your hand on them. I'm telling you, there's a spirit of assassination that God wants to break. God, in Jesus' name, we command every harassing, assassinating spirit to lift right now in Jesus' name. Every Jezebelic attack, I command you right now to bow to Jesus. Every form of sorcery, every form of spell, some of you have had witches cursing you and you don't even know it. In the name of Jesus, we command every evil spirit to be silenced right now. Ten more seconds in Jesus' name. Who the sin sets free is free indeed. We pray for healing. We pray for restoration. We pray for re reformation. We pray for revolution. Let revolutionaries emerge from this meeting. in here that you are called to ministry together if you feel like the Lord's given you a couple's ministry or you're supposed to minister together I want you to raise your hand good 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 again I'm just stepping out in faith I feel that there are spirits assigned to make you unequally yoked So let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I lift up every couple in this room in 2023 who you have yoked and called and joined together. And we command every spirit of divorce, every spirit that has come to bring separation and confusion, I command that spirit of Leviathan to go which gets into communication in twists. I command Leviathan to come off of your marriage right now in Jesus' name. Every spirit of strife has to go in Jesus' name. Some of you are fighting about nothing. I command that to go right now in Jesus' name. The Lord puts you together, the Lord's married you together, and you will live. Are you guys together right here? Can you come? <clears throat> yeah. Are you guys together? Yeah. I'm not trying to be prophetic there. This gets weird. 
that's my sister. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands toward them. Father, in Jesus' name, I break the back of satanic witchcraft and I command every spirit of the occult that's come through your bloodline to fall right now in Jesus' name. All manipulation and control that's coming through parents and in-laws, I command it to be broken right now in Jesus' name. Even right now, even right now in Jesus' name, we take authority over the control spirit. Every controlling demon, I command you to leave them right now in Jesus' name. Come out now. Bow to the name of Jesus. This is a new life. The nightmare's over. This is a new life. The nightmare's over. Come on, pray. We're partnering with their deliverance. This is gonna become normal. Deliverance is the children's bread. I am sorry that you've gone to church your whole life and not seen people get free of demons. We command that religious spirit to go in Jesus' name. Come on, we need to see people get free. In Jesus' name, Holy Spirit, I ask that you would mark this brother with courage. <sighs> come on, if you're married here and you feel like you're under witchcraft, come, come here. I can get you free because I got free. <clears throat> come on, who else? If you're married here and you're under the power of witchcraft, who else? You can't get free unless you confess you have a problem. In Jesus' name, I break the power of religious witchcraft. Every letter of the law, every letter of the law, it's okay that you don't have the blueprint. It's okay that you don't know. Lord says, all in wonder stirs up religious spirits. Not having every I dotted and T cross makes religion mad. And in Jesus' name, the Lord says, I'm gonna do a great restoration work with you. The Lord says, I'm gonna use you guys like a fire hydrant in this generation. And out of your bellies are gonna flow rivers of living water. You will not drink from the bitter waters anymore. Bitterness, go. Be uprooted now in Jesus' name. Every dagger that you tried to put in your heart, now in Jesus' name. Spirit of sabotage, go right now in Jesus' name. I curse every evil spirit in your bloodline. I command the control spirit that was passed down upon you through your mother to be loosed right now in Jesus' name. Let that power be broken. Come on, I don't hear anybody praying. Do we want to see people free? Come on, eyes on Jesus. In Jesus' name. The Lord says there's been a swirl and there's been a twirl. But the Lord says, I work all things together for my good for those who love me. The Lord says that you were called on purpose for a purpose for such a time as this. Feel led to pray all confusion go right now in Jesus' name. It's just a spirit of confusion right now in Jesus' name. I command every form of adrenal fatigue to leave your body right now in Jesus' name. Like the devil's trying to suck the life out of you right now in Jesus' name. The Lord says, be bold and courageous for I am with you. Do not bow to timidity. Do not bow to fear. Do not look to the left or to the right in Jesus' name. 
Jesus' name. Father, in Jesus' name. All of this warfare that's around you. Lord says the warfare is not in you. The warfare is around you. And I just bless the purity of your hearts. I bless your yes to God. Sometimes religion makes you feel like you're in rebellion. And I break that lie off your life right now. Lift up your hands. We got her. I just put a demand on the pure prophetic anointing upon your life. The Lord says you will prophesy. You are a seer. You are a dreamer. I command the prophetic spirit to come upon you right now. And I break the power of Jezebel off of your life right now in Jesus' name. All fear and all intimidation, I command you to go right now in Jesus' name. There it is. Go in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, come, come, come in Jesus' name. Come out now in Jesus' name. Every evil spirit assigned to you, I command it to go right now in Jesus' name. All spirit of fear and intimidation go right now in Jesus' name. I command a black widow to leave your life right now in Jesus' name. We break the power of this web right now in Jesus' name. Fire of God come. Fire of God come. Every evil spirit go in Jesus' name. Keep praying for him. Father, I command the spirit of paralysis to be broken off of this woman's life right now in Jesus' name. We say rise up and walk in the power of Jesus Christ. Lord, I thank you for the blood of forgiveness. I thank you for the blood of the cross at Calvary. And I see the fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit mightily upon you. I see chains being broken from those who have hurt you. I break a curse off of your life from family members that have sought to keep you captive for years. The Lord says you're coming out of the cave in 2023 and you will walk again. Every demonic force bow to the name of Jesus. I speak to your back and I say be made whole in Jesus' name. Every attack on your back, we command it to go right now in Jesus' name. Something to do with your spine. I command it to go right now in Jesus' name. From the top of your head to the bottom of your feet, healing in Jesus' name. And the Lord says the attack has come to hinder the worship. For the Lord says that you are a mighty worshiper in my house. And you've been called to give me high praise. And the Lord says you're going to see the power of witchcraft broken. I see you delivering witches. I see you delivering psychics. I break that power off of your life right now in Jesus' name. And we say you are a mighty deliverer. Come on, keep praying. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for their courage. I thank you for their boldness. I command the spirit of trauma to go right now in Jesus' name. You guys have been through a lot. You've been through a lot of fiery trials and furnaces. And I see the hand of God reaching out. I hear God saying, you can't. You cannot. You cannot continue in your own strength but I give grace and power to the weak. And the Lord says, I'm gonna raise you up as a trophy of my grace. I'm gonna raise you up as trophies that in the midst of, wicked, in the midst of weakness, I stepped in and changed the narrative. God, I pray over every narrative that has every trace of evil on it. I break its power right now in Jesus' name every spirit of divorce in your bloodline. I command it to go right now in Jesus' name. Every tormenting spirit of depression, go in Jesus' name. Go, spirit of heaviness, go. Spirit of trauma, go. Stand up again.
Father, I pray for double. Double, double, double. I prophesy to you that favor is coming. I prophesy to you that prophetic mentoring and fathering is coming. I prophesy to you that you're going to come to the house of a prophet and find us a safe place to learn and grow. There was Elijah and then there's Elisha. You have an Elisha anointing on your life. In Jesus' name. Come on, I need your help. I need your help. There you go. Where there's been desires, where there's been hopes and dreams and they've been crushed. I release healing to that trauma right now in Jesus' name. I command that gate to be shut to the enemy right now in Jesus' name. We shut that door. I command the tormentors of disappointment. Every tormenting spirit of disappointment. I command nightmares of regret to go right now. You will no longer live in the past, but you'll give me newfound glory in the present. I see you writing about the goodness of God. I see you testifying about his enduring love. You're going to come out strong prophetically. There's a strong prophetic anointing upon you guys. You're in the wilderness. You're going through the dark night of the soul. But there's still water. There's still water. There's still refreshing. In Jesus' name. Lift up your hands. Let's cover these guys. Father, we say, hallowed be thy name. <clears throat> your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And every spirit of witchcraft, every dream that someone had that wasn't your dream, it's taken you five to seven years to get past it. Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, I release a creative miracle to your womb. I command every spirit of witchcraft that's come to abort the purposes of God. We pray that power be broken right now. And I prophesy over you that you guys are called to be a mother and father of nations. And the warfare has been so strong. And the access to the bitterness and the pain has been so easy. And in the name of Jesus, we're uprooting and we're extracting all bitterness all anger, all rage. We break their power right now. We renounce them and say, you don't have a place here any longer. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord says, I'm calling you out and I'm calling you up. Lord says that you are a soldier on the front lines. The Lord says, I'm mantling you for battle. But the Lord says, if you just run to the front, you'll get into performance. The Lord says, I'm bringing you out of the orphanage and I'm going to choose you as a son. We speak the love of the Father over you. Every word that was ever spoken against you of not being good enough, every word that you needed to hear from a father that you never heard.
You're a good woman. <laughs> You're a good woman. You're a strong woman. Watch and be amazed. For by this time next year, you'll watch the very hand of God do what you think is impossible. Alpha, Omega. I'm an awful singer. Let's worship Jesus. Just a few more minutes. I just want to wait on him. All eyes on Jesus. Focus on him. Yes to healthy family. Yes. Hey, if you missed it, repent. If you did something wrong, own it. Take the humble.
humble route. Take the low route. Let Jesus be glorified. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Well, you guys are welcome to hang out and linger. If God's touching you, if you need more ministry, you can continue to receive that here. We'll be back tomorrow. Doors open at 9 o'clock with Dr. Michael Brown. He'll be here in the morning to conclude our conference. We love you guys. Thank you for coming. Whether you come twice a year, we love worshiping Jesus with you. And I pray that there was a special deposit in you tonight. So give somebody a hug. Go hang. You're welcome to hang out. If not, we'll see you tomorrow. If you're from a different church, bless you. We pray that revival hits you tomorrow as you gather. In Jesus' name.